Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. And I would like to welcome all of you into this really long, and hopefully really long, Next.js course. I wouldn't be calling it as a Next.js crash course, because it's not a crash course, it doesn't just give you overview, but it's a real world production grade application that you can deploy and can use in the real world. This application is specially designed in such a way that it provides you a path to learn Next.js absolutely from scratch. I'll give you the prerequisite as well. But the goal was not to just teach Next.js, but to teach it in certain way that you feel absolutely confident about building application using Next.js. I want to lay down the entire architecture of Next.js in such an easy manner that you feel that it's like a walk in the park no longer afraid of being app directory and source directory and all those jargons, you will be able to dive deep into the actual documentation of the Next.js. If you find any problem, you will be able to tweak it out. Now this application is decently complex, so we need to pick up a tech stack. I will choose that. I will also give you the prerequisites and everything that is required. I'm pretty sure you're excited to build this application with me. This application, one more very important thing, this application will lay as a foundational block of some of my upcoming tutorials in the future, as well as if you are trying to make any application which is really, really complex in Next.js, this will lay down a solid foundation for you. So everything is all set up and I'm pretty sure you are all excited about getting started with the Next.js along with me. This is going to be one of the best ride and again, Trust me, you will have so much of confidence. That's my goal. Bring confidence in you so that you can build application. And again, even if you are not that much confident in building a full stack application, no worries. I'm here. I'll walk you through with each and every word that we are going to write. No copy pasting of the code. We'll be writing everything down and I'll explain you every single logic that is required for that. So I hope you are excited for that. Now first, let me tell you what are the a tech stack and what are the prerequisite for that. Let's start with the prerequisite. Now, this entire Next.js application is built in TypeScript. But again, if you are not much familiar with the TypeScript, that is totally okay. I am not using any a crucial part of the TypeScript which is making it just for TypeScript people. If you know JavaScript, that is also fine. You will be able to understand 100% of the code. So there is no too much higher dependency of the TypeScript. If you know it, that's great. Otherwise, I do have a series on TypeScript as well. You can watch that. Otherwise, it's not that much of a hard and fast requirement. On top of that, Next.js is a framework which is built on top of a library known as React.js. Everybody's favorite. Now, React.js is amazing, but I don't expect that you have 100% knowledge of React.js. If you know how to just use a simple use state, use effect, and just uh, can write some buttons in, Next in the React.js, that is all. That is all. But if you don't know even that much, that's also totally fine. I'll still try to explain you some of the bits and pieces of it. But I would certainly say that the experience of React.js would be super helpful in this series. And that is it. Now, I don't expect you to have too much knowledge on the backend part. Uh, I just expect you have heard about some of the backends and stuff. This would be also a great uh, starting guide for you to understand about the database that we will be using, which will be MongoDB in this case. Everything that we are writing in this in this entire example and this entire app is fully productionable. So you will be able to put all of your application into the cloud and you will be able to serve the users and everything. Not only that, this application will be available to you on the GitHub, not just to simply watch and see it, but actually to contribute in that. I am deliberately not touching too much on the styling part of this application. I'm keeping it very raw so that you can bring in your Tailwind experience and can contribute in this repository. You can, the functionality of this app will be 100% working, but the UI part, you can modify it as much as you like. I'll keep it open-ended so that you can focus more on this. Remember, this is a Next.js course, not a Tailwind course. So I'll keep your Tailwind side on totally you so that you can bring your knowledge and can contribute in this application. Remember, don't fall into the tutorial hell. You need to contribute something in this as well. All right, I hope you're excited. Now, bringing in about the tech stack side, that what is the tech stack that we'll be using? Let me walk you through with that. So the tech stack that we'll be using is absolutely simple. There is nothing too much to be scared about that. Uh, first thing, we obviously will be using Next.js. Together, we'll be reading a lot of documentation so that you can actually learn that what it takes to read the documentation, bring the code from documentation and write along with it. So this is the first thing that we'll be doing and we'll be using App Router, absolutely latest as modern as possible. We'll be firing up a, an NPX create next app latest so we can pull in uh, the latest of the next JS. 
Apart from this, for the database side, we'll be using uh, MongoDB and we'll be using MongoDB in the cloud. The only thing that I don't like about it, it's too white. It should have a dark mode, uh, but sadly I couldn't find it. So we'll be using and creating a new cluster. I'll walk you through from the scratch that how to create a database and how to use it. And apart from this, since we are building up an authentication system, I'll walk you through what we are building in a minute, but we will be needing some kind of a mail service. Now, one of the production grade mail service is a mail trap. I'm not affiliated with them, but I have been using them for a while for teaching purposes. I found it pretty interesting. Instead of just exposing your Gmail and firing up email from that, that's not a good idea. Use professional tools and mail trap is one of the many such tool that you can use. So I'll be using this one. Uh, so apart from this, I'll be using a little bit of Excalidraw, everybody's favorite, to just draw some diagrams and explain you the stuff. All right, so this is all what we'll be doing. First, let's dive into the theoretical part and what we are about to build. So what we're about to build is pretty simple. So first and foremost, we'll be having a, this a screen, and this one is going to be a simple sign-up screen. Now, this is not going to be any ordinary sign-up screen. Uh, in the world of Next.js, you obviously cannot just rely on the front-end part. We surely will have front-end part. We need a back-end part as well. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so now, apart from this, we'll be having a simple uh, login screen as well. So what we're building basically is a user authentication system. Now, since in the latest, a lot of upcoming tutorials will require this authentication system. So we have a proper course here, which explains you everything about what happens, what goes in the authentication system, as much as in the core way possible. All right. So we have a sign up, we have a login, and apart from this, once we have the sign up and the login, we will also have a profile section. Now this profile section will have a couple of pages. Uh, again, we'll not focus about what we are serving on the profile. We are more concerned about how we can actually reach to the, uh, through the profile. Uh, if there is a unique ID with the user associated with that, how can I grab that unique ID from the URL? There's so much to explore about this. So this is going to be a basic application where user will be able to sign up, log in, and profile. That's all. But there are also cases where user might also request you a couple of more features. So we'll be designing them. I'll walk you through with the scenario of how we can actually go ahead and reset the password or maybe also verify. So user account needs to verify as well. So we'll be working on the functionality of reset and verify. Once you understand even one part of it, the next part is super easy to understand. I'll walk you through with that scenario as well. How to reset the password, how to verify the user. So all of this functionality will be taking it down. It's absolutely a core of any application that you'll be building. So we'll be working on that part. And after this, I'll keep it a little bit open-ended so that there is enough space that you can contribute in that part. All right, so hope that is uh, good. And I'll just write the tech stack here as well so that we don't uh, get any troubles or problem in it. So we'll be using Next.js. I know that's very small. I don't like even the small fonts and stuff. I always keep them big. Easy to watch in the tutorial. Uh, for the backend part, we'll be using uh, MongoDB. So we'll be going with the MongoDB. Now, of course, uh, we'll be needing a few of the stuff since we are on the MongoDB. Uh, we'll be going with the Mongoose. Uh, we'll be going with the Node Mailer as well. And a couple of uh, more things will be there, like I'll be using React, Hot Toast, and all these things. I'll not configure them properly. I'll leave them as a simple exercise for you, but don't worry, we'll get the enough of the messages and everything for us. Uh, so again, it will be super fun to uh, work on with that. All right, so this is majorly the tech stack uh, that we'll be going through. So I think that is it. That is all what we'll be going. Of course, I'll walk you through how we can configure the mail trap and stuff. Now let's first start not, not by creating anything, but actually to understand the theory about it. Now the theory is actually very, very amazing here. So uh, let me just walk you through. So first and foremost, just understand that everything in Next.js has changed. Any tutorial that you're watching, which is older, is no longer going to work. So you need to really understand this part. Now, everything that you work on with this now actually goes inside the source directory. So consider this as this is my source directory. So this is the source directory where you will be working. Inside the source, you are going to find that there is a directory uh, known as app. So this is our app. Let's explore this. So this app directory has a couple of things inside it. The first part, in fact, if I bring this app directory here and try to explain you that how does this app directory actually goes, this app directory can easily be divided into two portions of it. The first portion goes here, second portion goes here. The first part, you can easily call this one as backend. And yes, there will be a lot of people who will try to explain it with the meaning of, is it a server component? Is it a client component? Yes, we'll go through with that. We'll understand the difference of it, but not right now. 
they are much more easier to understand in this uh, way and context. So we have this backend and we have got this frontend. So this is all that goes into this app directory. And this app directory is obviously a part of this source. So go ahead and just let's just go ahead and have an arrow just like this. So we have this source. But apart from this app, you will also find that it's not just everything goes into the app directory. Some things goes outside of the app directory as well. Uh, for example, uh, most of the time when I design my models, you can absolutely place these models outside of the app directory. Not just the models, uh, we'll also keep some of our helper files. For example, I want to shoot an email. I want to verify my tokens, JWT tokens. Yes, we'll be using them. So how that works, we'll be keeping them outside as well. All right. This is the whole gist of everything. Let me summarize that quickly. Now, in the latest of Next.js, you'll find everything is inside the source directory. And inside the source directory, you have this app. App has two portions of it, the backend part and the frontend part of it. But it's not like everything goes inside the app directory. There are other files you can obviously create, like models, helpers, components. There's so many of the files that you can create, which can rely and reside outside the app directory. Now, more notoriously, you'll see, not notoriously, but yeah, more of the uh, time you'll see that the backend portion is actually uh, written inside the API folder. And yes, the naming convention is super, super important in the Next.js. Even a slightest wrong thing in the next in the naming convention will just create a havoc in the folder. Remember, this is a framework. Whenever we talk about framework, there are rules and regulation you have to follow. Usually these rules and regulation comes with the variables names or maybe uh, how the process needs to work, how the response needs to send, how the app directory should work out. So all these things need to go uh, hand in hand. Now, you'll find a common thing as well that whenever you are writing most of the part in the APIs and the backend, you are using file name as route. And in case of the front end part, you are actually using the file name with the name of page. It could be page.tsx, it could be page.ts usually TSX, and route is usually route.either.js or either TS, whatever you are using. We'll be using TypeScript, so we'll be calling it as a route.ts, and here the page. So I hope now this diagram makes it so much clear that how things are going to go and how things actually work. Now, apart from this, there are certain files which also needs to be inside this app directory and how this actually goes and work on. Now, one of the most important thing that you'll be looking up for is notice this. This is what the meaning of app, but hey, there is a very common file which you'll be using a lot, which is known as middleware. Where, where does the middleware looks like? It's inside the source directory, but it's not inside the app directory. Yep, that's how usually the configuration is. Uh, there are other files and folders you can have, middleware, just like the middleware is here. You can have your customized error pages, lots of other pages, which I'll walk you through with the documentation as well. You need to put it a little bit outside. So let me walk you through with the documentation as well. So let's just say we want to understand about the middleware. Right now we don't understand too much the working part of it. But if I go ahead and look for it, uh, notice here this is the middleware and here's the convention, use the middle page. And notice here, for example, the same level as page or app or inside the source if applicable. So as I told you, it's actually inside the source, everything is inside the source, but it doesn't need to be inside the app directory. This is where it confuses a lot of people. But don't worry, I'll walk you through with every single thing, how to read the docs and everything, how to even see and utilize, we'll be utilizing this exact piece of code. So you don't have to worry even a tiny bit for that part. All right. So this is all the basics that we have done and we have understood the basics meanings of how the things are being done. Let's go ahead and create with that. Uh, I have already created an account on MongoDB Atlas. You also need to do this. So let's go ahead and start. I have actually removed everything from scratch. We are gonna be getting with there. So just click on build a database and I'll be using AWS, but I'll be using free one. I'll not pay money. <laughs> this is YouTube, I'm teaching for free. So I think this should also be free. Uh, so I'll be choosing a location which is nearby to me. And uh, where is nearby to me? I think Mumbai is the nearest looking for me. And yes, I'm from India. So I think that's it and create this. This usually takes a couple of minutes to spin. So go ahead and be a little patient about that. I also want to create a user and a password. So I'll actually do this later on and uh, connect from IP address and all of this. So we'll be doing that manually. So I think we'll not use this quick start of the security guide. 
I'll just walk you through. This is actually way better to explain uh, if I go ahead and ex explain everything in a much precise and easier way. So there we go. Our cluster is created. Now, first thing that you have to do is go up here and let me just go ahead and uh, show you this. So, all right, I'll just shrink myself a little bit, move here. All right. So, uh, first thing that you have to do is look up into this security thing. So, this security thing is super important. First, go ahead and click on network access here. This network access simply means to say that from where your application should be available. Your application is maybe on Warsaw. Your database might be in AWS. Should they talk to each other or not? So in this case, I have given access to all of this. So you can just go ahead and also click on add IP address. You can either add your current IP address, but since you are not on a permanent IP, your IP as soon as your router shutdowns and reboots, it might change. So in this case, just for an example, this is not a production level setting. We can go ahead and say 0 .0, uh, 0 .0 0.0.0.0 and slash 0, which means I want everybody to be able to access my uh, database if they have correct ID and password. Again, there is one more layer, which is ID and password, so that needs to be there. I can confirm this and this will add, there's nothing to add. Then go ahead and click on database access, that who can access your database. Right now we don't have any user. So I'll click on add user and I'll add a simple sample user with the name of YouTube and I'll enter a password. And again, you really need to be careful about what you're using as your password. If you use any special character, uh, that might be URL encoded or might create some issues in that. So be careful about that. The usual practice is to use numbers and letters. That's all. And uh, what we're going to do is we will be also adding a built-in role. So click on that drop down and we'll be selecting read and write to any database right now. And I'll just click on add user. So this will simply add a user which can actually talk to any of the database. Now that is it. That is all you have to do. Now click on the database. And all you have to do is click on this connect and it will give you this compass. Click on the compass again and this is the URL that you want to copy. So just click up here, it will copy it. Now notice here carefully that if you go ahead and carefully look onto this one, uh, this actually gives you the username but doesn't gives you the password. So password is something that you have already given there. So go ahead and use that one. I'll just close this one. That is all the requirement here for having this. Now let's just go ahead and move on to the next year's homepage and we'll be creating a new project here. So I'll just go ahead and open up a folder. So this is the folder that we are using. I already built this app, obviously, otherwise why would I be recording the tutorial? So I'll be calling this one as auth next.js and this one is for YouTube. So I'll be just grabbing this one. Let me fire up my VS code. There we go, VS code, here we are. And I'll just go ahead and uh, just fire this up here. And let's create a Next.js app. All right, so this looks good. Full real estate. All right, let me go ahead back up here and just click on this small command which says npx create next app. Very nicely hidden there. I'll just go on to VS Code and we'll start that. So I'll just go ahead and open this up and just paste it up here. And I guess the dot command still works if I want to install everything here. Let's go ahead and try this out. And I'll just put up a dot to just create a project in this same directory. And it will ask us a couple of things. Do you want to use TypeScript? Obviously, I want to use it. Let me also move myself a little bit onto the perfect place. All right, looks good. Looks good. Okay, uh, do you want to use ES linting uh, for this one? So obviously I want to use ES linting. So I'll just go ahead and move it up here. And let me just, all right, just give me a second. All right, so we want to use ES linting. Uh, yes, we want to use ES linting. Uh, do you want to tailwind? Yes, maybe you can contribute with the tailwind a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and yes. Uh, do you want to use the source directory with this project? Uh, we want to use the source directory or we want to use the app directory. Now, this is where a lot of people get confused. Yes, we want to use source directory because as I mentioned up here, uh, the source directory is now everything. Remember this source? Yep, source is everything. And this will also give you the app directory. So moving back, yes, we want to use it. Uh, you want to use app router? A 100% you want to use app router. This is the way forward. So anything that you're learning from now onwards, you want to use app router. I'll just hit enter. Would you like to customize the default import alias? I uh, usually no, but I'll show you that if you write yes, what actually happens. If you go ahead and select yes, it gives you two options. You can use at the rate or you can use or asterisk. 
for showing where is the home of this home directory. So we'll be using at the rate, which is also the default. And then it will just create a simple project in your application, in your folder, not your application. So this doesn't usually take much of the time, should be really, really fast. And yeah, mostly of the things are installed. All right, so there we go. Okay, let's clean this up. First, let's understand the directory structure, which I was telling you. So notice here in the source, we can see there is an app directory. And inside this, all the files are there. We have the page.tsx, which is always the common file. There is also a layout, which is also a wrapper. And inside the layout, we actually get the page. So notice here, if I just show you, uh, this is a wrapper. So everything that you are passing in as a children, the whole job of this is to just render this. If I go ahead and move it to next line, it's much more easier to understand. So this layout is nothing, it's just a wrapper. Maybe you have a common uh, navigation bar, maybe you have a common footer. So all this can be actually injected into the layout. And then children, whatever is being passed on, it just renders it as it is. So that's the basic meaning of how the layout actually works. Page.ts is uh, the way how we deal with the front end part of it. And most of the client side or the client rendering we'll be doing through this. I'll show you the difference between the client side and the server side in the next years. You don't have to worry in that part. Absolutely simple and basic. I will go with that. So we'll close this one. This is the basics uh, of it. Now inside this app directory, there is so much that you can go ahead and work on with this. And we will surely be doing that in just a second. First, let's open the package.json and you can see in order to run this, we have to say npm run dev, which will run the next dev, which is, let me tell you, is painful -y low, painfully slow, <laughs> not low, <laughs> painfully slow application to run. So if I go ahead and say npm run dev, this looks like it, it's faster, but it's not. So I'll just copy this and go back onto the browser and I'll start this and you'll notice every time it takes build, the first build is painfully slow, but this is how you get your application. All right. Now, it's not just that we will be just working with these dependencies only. We actually have some of our own dependencies as well, which will be super helpful for us in the future. So we'll be first installing them. Installing them is super easy. You can just go ahead and say npm install. The first package that we'll be using is Xeos. Yes, you can use fetch as well, but I want to give you the taste of how things actually work in the production, but feel free to use fetch. There is no such hard, fast rule. Then we have bcrypt, bcrypt.js. Now bcrypt.js is a library which use, is used commonly to encrypt the stuff. Uh, we'll be encrypting our password. Obviously, we don't want to store the clear text password in our database. Not only that, for creating the tokens as well. If you remember, I told you uh, just a few minutes ago that, hey, we'll be using uh, this middleware models and helpers, and they will be useful to reset and verify the tokens. We don't want to send ABCD. We want to send a really long strings, which is encrypted to the user. So for that, we'll be using the bcrypt.js. It's a super simple and amazing library for this one. Now, apart from this, we'll be sending the tokens and, and securely we'll be sending it, not to be stored in the local storage, but we'll be sending and securing the cookies from the server side so that it doesn't get manipulated on the front end side. Uh, for this, we'll be needing a JSON web token. So JSON web token. This is the library that we use for that. Now, after that, we'll be using Node Mailer. This is one of the most simplest library to shoot out an email. Uh, either you want to send it or shoot it out from the Gmail, or if you have something else like AWS, maybe Bluehole, whatever you're using, uh, you can just go ahead and use the node mailer for that. Now, another library, which I'll not be setting it up, but I'll give it to you for as an exercise is this React uh, Hot Toast. This is one of my favorite library, which works really amazingly well. It actually gives you small pop-up messages that, hey, a user successfully signed up, a user didn't sign up, so we'll be using that. I'll not be using it, so you can skip it at this moment, but it will be super good for you to contribute further down the road. All right, so I guess this is all that we need as of now. If we'll be needing something else, we can just, oh, I forgot one guy, which is Mongoose, how we are going to talk to the database. Now, Mongoose is a library which helps you to talk to MongoDB. It's a wrapper around MongoDB drivers, makes our life a little easier. Uh, so we'll be using that. Now, one thing a lot of you who are coming from the backend development might be noticing, I'm not using Express. You don't need it. You don't need it in the next years. This is all what we'll be using. So go ahead and install that. If we'll need any more library, we can go ahead and use it later on. I think this is more than enough for as of now. And further down the road, uh, let's go ahead and work on with this. Okay, so 
Couple of things, I'll mention it straightforward. I'll be creating a couple of directories first and foremost so that you get a feel of how the directories and all of this is layout. Because notice, already you can see the source and then app, then all the things are inside the app, but it is too difficult to see. I'll show you in the part here. So if I go ahead into Next.js, notice inside the source, everything is inside the app, but here the structure, the directory structure of the VS Code might confuse some of the people. So everything is inside the app. All right, I'll show you more of this as well. Now let's go ahead and create a couple of more folders and directories and stuff like that. First and foremost, now click on the source very carefully. Click on the source and create a new folder. And we want to create a folder known as model, or you can say models, both are the same. So it helps us now to actually see that, oh, now we can see that the, everything is inside the app and there's a model directory as well. We obviously will need some helper as well to shoot email and stuff like that. So it's a good idea that we create these helpers as well. Again, this was not going to crash your app or anything. It's just a folder and directory structures. All right. Now we have these application. Uh, there's a lot more that you can go ahead and create like that. So we'll be using that part as well. Now, one of the most important thing uh, that we'll be using is the environment variables. Obviously, our database strings cannot go in the clear text format. They need to go somewhere secure so that when we deploy them in the production, they actually are secure there as well. So one neat trick is you can come here into the VS Code and just double click here and it will automatically create a file in the root of the directory. That's where we want it. It is .env. These are your environment variables and you can access them easily. And in the production as well, in every single hosting, these environment positions are there that where you have to inject them. In the DigitalOcean, AWS, everybody has these secret managers. Uh, we'll come back onto this one. Right now, we don't want to add anything like that. I'm just creating a folder structure which can help you to do all these things. All right, so this is the basics that we have, that everything. Now notice here, everything is still inside the source, as I mentioned. Then we have this app, and then all the things are here. Now, one more interesting thing which confuses a lot of people is majority of your file will go into the app. And I told you just here that inside this app, somewhere, here it is, your backend also goes, your front end also goes. So we need, it's time that we verify that, that how does that works? So inside this app, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and I'm going to call this one as uh, login. So login is going to be first. Now I have to ask myself before creating these folders, am I creating it for backend or frontend? I'm creating it for frontend. So if I'm creating it for frontend, I know I have to call it as page. Yeah, that's, that's the page we talked about. So I'll go back and inside this, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and I have to call it as page.tsx. The name is super, super important. Call it something else and it will crash up everything. Yeah, that's how it works. So now that we have this page.tsx, now it's time that we simply go ahead and just simply have the basics of a simple hello world kind of a thing or just have it a simple test or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say export and default, export default function and we'll call it as login page, just like this. Now inside this login page, obviously you want to return something uh, to just say hello world or something like that. Right now I'm not worried about the functionality. So I'll just go ahead and say, hey, return. And what do I want to return? A simple div, and which will say login and a div close. That's it, that's all what we are doing. Now obviously I would love to just properly uh, align this. This is really, really bad. I'll enable my, uh, oh, there we go. So I need to just have this. No, no auto prettier is coming in. I'll make sure I enable that so that it doesn't bother you that much, but I have to just save it. Now, the moment I save it, that is it. I don't have to worry about any router or anything. I can go back on to my next app and I can simply go ahead and say slash login. And that's it. Uh, probably I didn't started my server. Yep, my bad. So we'll just go ahead and say npm run dev. And there we go, our server is up and running. All right, looks good, looks good. Let's go back onto the browser and hit a login route again. And this is painfully long. So we can see that this is a login. Of course, you can use, go ahead and use your skills. Like you can go ahead and add a class name. Then you can go ahead and say, hey, I want to have something, suggestions, please. Flex. Okay, no suggestions. I'll just leave it. I'll just add a simple classes here. So class name, we'll just go with the text dash center, text dash white. I was expecting that it will give me all these suggestions. And we'll just also say text dash to Excel. Yep. 
So there at least we can see that there is a nice login. Uh, there should be text center as well. Align center. Yeah, there should be text center. All right. Anyways, we'll just figure out the CSS part a little bit later on. But as we can see now, can I go ahead and use a sign up here? Nope, I cannot. This is a 404 page. By the way, you can customize your 404 page as well. Uh, you can read the documentation a little bit and you can customize. Just read about, hey, I want to learn about 404. Uh, not found.js so you can create a new file there with the name of just not found as you can see app blog not found so wherever your app is inside the blog and this is where you can just create a file and customize this one I'll not do that as of now I just want to show you the basics of how things are working now let's try to crash this app so let's just say I understood the basics of it but I didn't understood truly of it so I'll just go ahead and again click on the app Create a new folder. You always have to create a folder for every single route. I'll just go ahead and say sign up. And obviously it's engineering uh, that we try and fail the stuff as well. So let's just say I call this one instead of the page. I just call it as a login dot TSX. What happens in that case? Again, we are going to go ahead and say export uh, default command suggestions. Uh, and we'll call this one as we should call it as sign up page. That would be more cool to crash because we are in the sign up. So let's just call this one as sign up.tsx. So now we have export default and I'll not call it as login page, sign up page. There we go. And inside this, we are going to go ahead and say we'll return. What do we want to return? A simple div with a flex? Probably not. Uh, we'll also have a simple sign up. And we'll have a div just like that. And again, of course, this needs to be there. All right, so we're returning this. Now, let's just save this. There is no problem here. It says compiled successfully. No problem there. But if I go up here, instead of hitting the sign up, now if I let's try login first. Login works. And then I try sign up. Nope, it doesn't work. So now we understand the importance of the file and naming convention because it's a naming based routing. So I'll go ahead and turn it up into page.tsx. And what you're going to notice as soon as it compiles, all you got to do, you don't even need to hit the reload. So it works out of the box. So this is how the naming convention and everything works up here. All right. Let's go back and try to explore a tiny bit more into that, how the things are going to work. All right, so as I told you, everything is inside the app and there's one major portion of it. So we have talked about how the front end part will look like. And I told you, you can also work with the back end part of it, but the back end part needs to be inside the folder of API. Let's go ahead and do that. So inside the app, we'll create a new folder, naming convention, cannot emphasize it more, API. And inside this API, this is way how you actually define your routes. So for example, let's take this API and in this API, the way how you're going to make your folder is going to be your API route. So for example, if further uh, inside this API, you create a folder or maybe a couple of folders. Let's go ahead and work on with that. So you created a folder named as users, maybe for an example. And you also created a folder name as uh, what else? Home. So you can go ahead and create, and this will define that how the routes are going to work. So API slash users, and similarly API slash home. So this is how it actually works. Absolute basic, there is nothing too much complex about it, but this is how it actually goes. I'll go back. And now inside the APIs, I want a new folder structure to be followed, which is known as users. So obviously my route is now not just the API directly, but API slash users, and then whatever the file folder, how am I creating? And as I mentioned, inside this API, just like in the front end, it is exactly almost copy paste, but the file name is just route. So what we learned here is if we want to create a sign up, we have to create a sign up folder first. And inside that folder, we have this page.tsx. Similarly, in the users also, we need to create a folder first. Now this folder can be anything, a sign up, anything, whatever you like. So I'll just go ahead and create a sign up. And once I have this sign up, now inside this sign up, you have to create a route. That is route.ts. Of course, it's not X because it's not a component. Now, just to make sure you understand it more proper, inside the users, I'll create one more folder. That will be login because obviously, anyhow, I have to create the login route. And I'll just create a new file and that will be route.ts. 
ts. So this is now a proper folders and structure that we have, that we have this login API route, we have this sign up API route as well. This is now finally a complete guide that how actually the folder structure and everything is, is laid out. This is absolute basic. Uh, but there's a couple of things. I cannot just go ahead and work on with sign up. I cannot go ahead and work on with login uh, because these APIs needs database connection. And this Next.js is an edge run framework. So there's always edge runtime. So it doesn't stay connected with your database. Every single time there is a database call, you have to actually call your database, make a connection with it. And then you talk to your database, send some file, receive some file, all these things actually go ahead and work uh, through that. Now, in order to actually have this, you need to have some configurations. So I'll just close this app. Notice here, we have helpers outside, we have models outside. Just like this, we can also have our database connections uh, outside as well. And there are a lot of ways how you can go ahead and do this. So at least let's go ahead and connect the database. I'll first go into ENV and I'll create a couple of environment variables so that they are helpful for us and later on we can use them. Uh, so first and foremost, we'll be having this mango underscore URL or URI, whatever the way you prefer. I'll also be using a token underscore secret. That could be any secret. Uh, I'll be using something like Next.js, YouTube, whatever. And we'll also have a domain. This will also be useful later on. So I'll just use an HTTP uh, local uh, 3000. That's my domain name. This will be helpful for me when I'll be shooting some emails. So I obviously want to click on the and have the local host. So this will be useful later on. Now let's go back on to uh, getting the string. So let's go ahead and connect compass and just literally copy this. Come back here. Uh, paste it up here and all you have to do is add your password here. So obviously I'll be adding my password but behind the scenes so once this video gets over this part of the video gets over I'll add my password. So I'll just say add my password. So obviously I'll not add it in front of you otherwise I don't want to mess up anyways it's a test database but still. Okay so I'll just save it and we'll try to connect with the database. I'll walk you through with the connection. Uh, at least the code part of it. Now notice here we have app helper modules. So similarly, we'll have the DB config, whatever the name you want to give it. I'll give it a name of DB config. I think that makes sense. So DB config. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Now again, inside the DB config, I would love to keep, uh, I'll, I can just actually close all this. Close others. Yeah, close everything. All right, so inside the DB config, come on. Now inside the dbconfig, I will just have a dbconfig.ts file. Let's go ahead and create. So dbconfig.ts. Uh, in this part, the naming convention doesn't really matter much. So you can just call it whatever you like. It is not going to bother you anything at all. In order to connect with the database, let's get some more screen real estate. The first thing is who actually is capable of connecting or talking to MongoDB? It's Mongoose. So we're going to go ahead and have mongoose and that mongoose will be coming up from mongoose. And then we'll be exporting this method as well. And it obviously needs to be a sync. We are talking to database. And as I always say, database is always in another continent. So things needs to be a sync. So I'll just go ahead and have a function just like this. Connect. We'll call this one as absolutely simple connect. And we'll wrap this up into try catch block. So I'll just go ahead and have the try. Try catch. There we go. The catch part is the easiest one. So first we are going to handle that part. It's really simple. We're going to have a oops, console dot wrong and we'll say the classic, the most horrific error, which is something went wrong. Uh, but we'll also go ahead and use the console log for displaying the error. You can go ahead and use error dot messages as well. That's totally up to you. No problem at all in that case. Let's try to get a string of mongoose connection. So mongoose uh, dot connect, obviously dot connect. And this requires you to have just the URL. Now I'll not give the URL which is suggested me by the copilot. I'll be using my own string and that you'll see quite a lot in this entire series. So process.env. Um, and again, make sure you take the URL and name of the variable pretty accurately. It is Mongo URL. I'm using, I should be using all uppercase to make it actually all Mongo underscore URI. This one should also be domain. So everything is consistent there. I'll, I'll simply copy this and we'll say Mongo URI. Now, here's the interesting thing. Since we are using TypeScript, there is no guarantee that this URI will always resolve, but I know it will always. So I'll just put an exclamation to make sure that, hey, I take care of it. You don't worry, it will always be available. 
And that's it. So all you have to do is this much. Now, once you have done this much, uh, then you can actually grab a connection. So we can go ahead and grab a connection. Uh, and actually, let's hold this into a variable. So connection will be given to you by uh, mongoose.connection. Once mongoose has connected, it will give you mongoose.connection. The string will be available. And based on this, you can actually listen to a variety of events. For example, one such event is a uh, connection and every event is being listened by the word dot on. Now inside this, you can go ahead and try the connected. Connected, this is the one event and it fires a callback, obviously. So once I have this callback and I'll just go ahead and use it like this and we'll remove this, yep. Sometimes these auto suggestions are just painful, but bear with me. So we'll just simply have a MongoDB connected successfully successfully <laughs> yeah i would love that okay so this part is all done you can also listen to some of the errors in case you wish to so similar to that connection dot errors and you can just go ahead and listen to these errors just like this i'll come back here if there is any error you can just go ahead and say hey uh, mongodb connection error please make sure mongodb is running then we can pass on error as a process string and we can exit gracefully here so this is all that is required to go ahead and get connected with that. And I'll save this one as well. So there we go. So this is the basics of it. Now, the most important part is this connect needs to come in in almost every single place in the API because without the connect, you cannot talk to database and every single time an API call is there, you have to have to connect with the database. There is no exception. There is uh, no option that is available for you. This is how it works. So there is no exception on that part. All right, so I think this is a really, really a good progress that we have made about this application so far. All right, so this looks okay, this looks good. Okay, what else we can do uh, next up? Now next up, I want to do is, actually I want to prepare my, at least a sign up screen so that I know that there is a sign up screen and how things are actually going on, working on with this. All right, so let's go into, again, I don't want to go into API, backend part I'm not handling, I'm handling first the front end part. So this is my signup screen. I'll go into page.tsx and I will obviously import few of the things. Now, one thing important that you need to understand from the front end part, I need to grab some data and send it to the back end, just like we you do uh, in a regular application and React application, or maybe there's a back end in Django, Spring, wherever that is. You collect the information and make an Axios request or fetch request to that. The same thing I have to do, but there's a problem. In the recent version of the Next.js, everything is a server component. And server component don't have access to anything that is on the front end side. It's on server. So uh, the most crucial thing that you need to understand here is that whenever there is this uh, dilemma between the front end part or the back end part, you need to understand it very clearly that anything that's on server needs can access everything on the server side, file system, anything that's on the server. Front end part, if you want to take advantage of use state, use effect, anything that's on the front end part of it, Windows location, maybe you want to access the location, the URL, anything that's on the page, that's on the client side. And you have to explicitly make your application as a client side. Got it? No confusion, absolutely simple. Anything that's on the back end, here's a simple hint. Most of the things in the API folder, yep, that's on the back end side. That's default server component, so that is that. But anything that's usually outside, not always, but outside, is usually a client component if you want to take some data. In this case, the sign up form, we want to take some data from the user and send it on the backend. So obviously that is going to be on the front end side. So let me walk you through how we can convert any component into the front end or the client component. It's super, super simple. Let's go ahead and go up here. All you have to do is simply say use client. Just like we have used strict, we can go ahead and say use client. That is it one decorator and it is now a client component. You can use all of your window object, you can use all of your use state, you can use all of your use effect, everything. Yeah, how cool is this? All right, so now we'll be needing some of the libraries and stuff. So obviously I'll be needing something to redirect the things. So I'll be just going ahead and say, hey, I want to import the link. Uh, this is the next link, okay. I'll be also needing React as well. So I'll be saying that, hey, let's go ahead and bring in React. And from the React, we'll be saying, We'll be using a couple of stuff, but as of now, let's bring in React only. I don't know what we'll be using. And we will be using, because once the user is successfully signed up, I want him to redirect or get redirected to the homepage. 
for this, I need to use router. Here's a common thing which a lot of people are going to make mistake. The router is changed in Next.js in case you are coming up from the previous routers. I'll go ahead and say I want to use router. So this is the way how you bring in use router. And this router actually, notice here suggestion, it's absolutely wrong. This suggestion doesn't work. You cannot bring it like this. And let me show you how you actually bring it. You have to actually bring it from uh, next, uh, come on, I can write it, next slash. Again, this suggestion is also wrong. By default, even your GitHub Copilot, every suggestions, these are all wrong because this is the latest version of it. This one is now coming up from navigation. Yep. Use router, uh, not user router, use router, this is the one I want to bring in. Use router is actually coming up from navigation. And I tried it while building the application. Every single time the suggestion I relied on it, it, it gave me the wrong suggestion. So maybe it will take some time. And last but not least, we'll be using Axios. So I think we need to bring it like this, Axios. And these suggestions are usually correct. Uh, not this time. Again, suggestions are good, but they always don't work always. So we'll be just going Axios. All right. So this is the basics. Now, you'll also get these squiggly line because a lot of time, a lot of models, Mongoose, Axios, this is perfect installation. There is no problem in the installation, but TypeScript is one such thing which requires type uh, definitions as well. And since the Axios types are not defined, we have to actually explicitly install it. I don't remember them always. So always remember this. You can uh, click up here and then you'll get this bulb icon and you can click on it and you can say that, hey, uh, right now it's for error for the unused import, but it will also give you that, hey, install the dependencies or the types for it. So I usually click on that. That's how I actually go for it. Right now we are not using XEO, so that's why it's getting a little bit bothered. So no, no worries on that part. Okay, how we are going to get a sign up? Now, first and foremost, uh, we haven't designed our model yet, but I'll do that very, very soon. So first let's go ahead and try on the front end part, what user data you want to accumulate. So I'll go ahead and say, I will grab a user. So it will give me a suggestion, hopefully set user, react use state, and I'll just go ahead and close it like that. Now, what all information I'm looking up for? Uh, maybe I'm looking up for an email. Maybe I'm looking up for a password, of course. And also maybe username. So let's just say username. That is all. That is all the information I'm looking up for as of now. And of course, once a user actually gives me this all information, there should be a method which does all the sign up thing. So we'll be just going ahead and say uh, const and I'll say on sign up. And this method obviously will be talking to database. So this needs to be a sync. And there we go. Right now, I have no clue that how this will work. So I'll just keep a method as it is. I'm not worried on that part. So I'll just keep it as it is. All right. Now, right now, there is nothing uh, more in my mind. I just want to have a simple uh, divs here so that I can just go ahead and uh, place it up here. So I'll just use a little bit of my CSS that I have pre-written here. So I'll just use that instead of this login and stuff. So I'll just go ahead and give it to you directly. There's nothing uh, basic. All right. Now inside this, we are going to first have a simple H1, which says login. And I think that should work a tiny bit decent. Let's see that if we are crashing our app or it's going good. And we should be, oh, we should be in the sign up page. So we should not be saying login. We should be saying sign up. <laughs> uh, that's better. All right. So our looks sing up. <laughs> All right. Sign up. There we go. All right. Looks very tiny, but I'm okay with that. Now, after this, I'll be creating a couple of input forms. For this, I'll be starting with the label. We just need to create one, and then after that, we'll be just copying and pasting. So have some line break. Then let's go ahead and have a label. This one is going to be HTML for, not for email, but I'll, I'll edit that. This one will be for username. I'll first grab the username. This one will be for username. All right. By the way, we have, yep, all lowercase. That's nice. We have this label up here and uh, let's see how does that look? Yeah, username, not the best, but I'll, I'll work with that. All right, next up is we need an input. Now input field will have some other things. Uh, ID, username, ah, okay, I'm fine with that. Type is text and the value is user dot username. Yep, absolutely correct. And on change, absolutely perfect. In case you didn't got it, we are grabbing the event. We are calling this set user. 
which is a method, a function responsible for updating my variable user. So that's why I'm using here is set user and set user in which we are uh, keeping ev existing user everything same and the username only is getting updated with the e.target.value which is coming up from here. Absolutely simple, uh, no problem. Uh, we'll also grab a couple of modes uh, like for example, it is not suggesting me anything uh, but all right. I want placeholders as well, placeholder and I'll say username. Uh, let's see how does that look. Decent, not the best, but I'll just work with that. In case you want, you can go ahead and add a class name. We can add a little bit of padding of four. There's some suggestion. Let's see if that suggestion, uh, okay, not the best, not the bad. All right, uh, I think padding four is too much. Uh, I'll just go ahead and padding one is uh, two. We'll go with the two, we'll go with the two. All right, okay, so this is just the decent. As I told you, you can use your Tailwind skills and just uh, design this much better. Now, the best thing about this is now I have to grab email and password, so I can just go ahead and copy paste this. So I'll just grab from here. I'll make a duplicate of this one. And uh, obviously we made a mistake. Yep, we shouldn't be copying and pasting till the div, <laughs> my bad. And we'll just copy from the label to the input. Now we'll copy and paste, Yeah, better. So we'll just go ahead and use multi-cursors, username, 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 username. This needs to go on email. Let's see if we have made any mistake, should be okay. And then let's copy and duplicate this. And this one, this time will be password. So command D, command D, control D also. Multi-cursor, I love that. Password. Uh, the text should also be password. Password. And uh, that should be it for majority of the portion. Uh, username, email, password. Horrific form, but it will work. It will work. Now let's go ahead and grab a button as well. So we'll just go ahead and say button just like this. And this button will have class name. Ah, I love that. And uh, what we're gonna do is just have this button and we'll call this one as sign up, suck, sign up. All right, sign up button, sign up here. All right here. Okay, a uh, couple of more things we need in this one is First and foremost, this signup needs to go uh, somewhere. So obviously we cannot just go like this. So we need to have an on click. Suggestions, please. No suggestions. On click. Yeah, on click signup. So I'm referring to this uh, method, which I created above. I don't know how this method works, but right now this is all the basics. Also apart from this, I'll use a link. So link will go to a login and we'll say something like this. Uh, this page will go like visit login. Ah, I'm not interested about login page. Yeah, that's basics. Uh, so there we go. Now we have a sign up page. Looks decent. And we have this username, email, password. Uh, so right now, I ah, don't want this email. Okay, so we got this one. So password, sign up, everything is working nice. We are happy with this. This also is taking us to the login page, which is not yet designed, but we can actually quickly design that very, very uh, basics, all part of it. So nothing too much worried on that part. As of now, we are going absolutely good with that. Let's also try and do login also in this same uh, video. Also, let's, let's try that. Okay, so I'll just go up here and we'll go to VS Code. Okay, this part looks good. Notice here how easy it was for us to actually design this. I'll go ahead and create, copy all of this. So copy this. Let's go into the login and page and let's go ahead and paste it. Obviously we want to change first the sign up page to login page. That's the most important thing, login page. Okay, let's analyze this from top to bottom. Uh, this needs to be client, okay. Link is there, React is there, use router is there. We are not using it, but we'll be using it very soon to forcefully push the user to slash profile or something like that. All right, so this is what we have as a user. We'll be grabbing only the email and password. So this time it's a login, so I don't need this field. All right, no suggestion, please. Thank you. This one is on login, makes sense, on login. And then we are returning this, sign up, nope, it should be login. 
your key on <laughs> login all right and then we have this uh, username is not here we are uh, just email and password so i think we can just get rid of this very first and should be all okay yep all okay <laughs> so there we go email is there nice and easy password is there nice and easy uh this one is obviously going to be on login login did we imported anything else yep we don't want this on <laughs> uh, so this one is good we have got this one password is getting password value good 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 login here and what we can see uh, visit sign up here we're not too much worried about providing a proper message to the user. This is not what we're going to do. All right. And now notice here, the, all the error is because of Axios, but this is not going to bother anything. This is just because of we are not using it right now. Notice here, Axios here is declared, but it's never used. So don't worry. Don't bother. This is just squiggly line warning. Uh, not going to do anything. All right. Save this. And let's see if I go ahead and there we go. Sign up is good. Uh, and our login page is not good. Yeah, now it's good. Take some time, some reloads, common. So we have some email and password, and that's nice. And we can visit the sign up page. And yeah, it takes a little time. Did we properly linked it? Looks like not. Yeah, not. This one is sign up. So there we go. Small debugging. Sign up. There we go. Login. Sign up. All right. So at least we are able to do this much of the thing. Now, not this much is not enough. We need to do a tiny bit more, tiny bit more. Uh, I want to walk you through with one more concept which will act as a foundational for a lot of upcoming things. Don't worry about these reds. I know these are bothering you, but eh, <laughs> these are okay. Okay, just like we have uh, studied about these logins and everything, we need to study about one more thing which will also be super, super helpful for us, which is known as how we can grab and build a profile for the user. Now notice here, this profile is not in the API. This is not in the backend part. I'm talking about the front end part only. So I'll just go ahead and say that, hey app, I'll create one more folder for you, which will be profile. And as you know, in the profile, I obviously have to create a page.tsx. So page.tsx. And we'll just go ahead and say export. Suggest me, please. Suggestions. No, no suggestions. Hate that. Export default. Yeah, now suggestions. Ah, good. I like that. And we can just go ahead and say return. Give me something. Yep. Nice and easy and a profile and an HR and what else profile page okay I'll, I'll take that no I'm, I'm not gonna take this much I'll just go with this and I'll just go ahead and wrap this up this div suggestions are good as long as you know what you are doing or what your application is trying to do otherwise you'll fall into the crap okay uh, I'll just indent this a little bit so that it doesn't bother you that much all right, so this is my profile page. And as you all know, this is super easy to work on with this. Later on, we'll learn how to protect these profile pages as well. So I can go ahead and work on the profile. Okay, profile page works absolutely fine. But what about if I go ahead and move into the profile and type slash one? How can I grab this one? Because this is a very crucial part of building the application. How can I grab not just one, but if I go ahead and write ABC here? This is a common syntax. You'll be doing this thousands of times. There's a special syntax of how you do this in the next JS. So let's go back onto the code. There we go. So in any folder or any route where you want to grab this ID, there is a special syntax in Next.js. Right click on this, create a new folder. Yep, folder, not file. All right, and make sure you put this into square brackets. In the square bracket, whatever you want to extract, whatever the object name, remember we have this request.body, similarly we have request.params in case you worked somewhere in the Next.js, not Next.js, Express.js. Similar to that, you have to grab your ID. It could be user ID, it could be ID, whatever you want, it could be anything, but it needs to be in the square bracket. But for example, if I go ahead and say ID, ID, this is not alone enough. This since is a folder and every folder on the front end needs a page known as page.tsx, you have to create that. So I'll just right click and create a new file and I'll call this one as page, not a page, <laughs> page.tsx, there we go. Now inside this page.txx, you will be able to grab it. How? First, I'll go into outside page because we have this already created for us. I'll copy this and I'll go into this page.tsx inside the square ID. Yep, the square ID one. So this is going to be the page where I'll actually grab everything. Now notice here, this is not my client component. 
I haven't said use client or something like this. I'll just go ahead and call it something different because profile page, there's already a profile page. Although it's not going to bother me anything, but I don't like it. I'll probably call it as user profile, not even page, user profile. Whatever the name you want to give, it's not gonna bother you. All right, so how can we grab these parameters? Really simple, you have to simply say, I want to grab some params, that's it. This params needs to be of type any, if you know the exact type, strings, whatever you're passing on, you can get that type. But since I'm not focusing too much on the TypeScript so that everybody can understand Next.js, so we'll simply go like that. Now, how we can actually grab this? So just here in the profile page, we'll first uh, add some classes here so that it can be easily visible. So we'll just grab text dash two, not two, four Excel. We need, we need big one. Four Excel, text is already white. Yeah, I think that's enough. Now just go ahead and inject your variable and all you have to go ahead and say is params dot whatever you are grabbing. In this case, we are grabbing ID. So just grab the ID, that's it. Now let's go back and probably we have got some errors. I know, it is compiling successfully. Let's go ahead and kill this. Probably I saved it at the wrong time. All right, compiled successfully. Now let's go ahead and grab this. Come on, take so much time. So we can see the profile and ABC. I think we should actually span this up. All right, to show you in a little bit better manner, although it doesn't really matter, but I'll just go ahead and do this. I'll cut this out and I'll go ahead and say span, just like this, paste it up here, and I'll add some classes onto this one. And we can close this down and we can say, hey, what do you want? I want, first of all, padding off two and I want it to be rounded. I want uh, bg dash, Golden, do you have golden? Yeah, they don't have golden. We have to go through with the orange. And the text is going to be black, I guess. Text dash black. You can use your own CSS of Tailwind. There we go, we got it. We just need a tiny bit of margin on the left. We'll just grow with the two. There we go. So although it was not intended to make it look like that, I know what you're thinking, don't think that. It's not that. Uh, so uh, we'll go A, B, C, and we can go one, one, two, two, three, three. Whatever you are grabbing, it's gonna grab it from there. So this solves a lot of our future problem that we'll be having. Looks nice, absolutely gorgeous there. And simply, if I go on to just the profile, one page is also getting served there, but that is this page, this page that right now here. This is a different page. And once you have this, uh, some IDs after this, like nine, nine, eight, eight, whatever, this is a different page that is being served. So this actually sums up your uh, basics about Next.js. I know this is a really, really long video, uh, but again, uh, we'll be having a really long short videos about discussing about Next.js and everything. Now we are in a perfect position that we have our folder structure ready. Everything is almost ready that how we want it to be. Our uh, DB connection is also ready. Now, in the next video, or if you're watching in continuation, that means just a skip forward. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do is, now, first we'll create an API. How we can create a backend, I'll just close a lot of things here. Okay, so let me just walk you through what we are going to do next up in this one. So the next plan is really simple. We simply want to work with the backend now. We have worked quite a lot on the front-end part, handle the parameters, file structure, directory structure, client component, server component, a lot of things we have discussed. Now the next goal is how I can design APIs. That will make me a full stack developer, almost. So in the, in the next video, or just a fraction after if, if you're watching in continuation, next up we are going to take an attack on building the APIs. We'll start obviously with the sign up API, the most basic, we'll extract the data and we'll sign up a user and throw up into the database. That is all what we want to do. And that would be a fantastic start. And then eventually we'll do login, then mailing, verify tokens and all of that, but slowly, slowly. We want to take uh, enough of the gradual path that it's enjoyable, it's fun and all of this. So I hope you have enjoyed this one. And uh, in case you are watching it uh, along with me, then hey, let's catch up in the next video. If you're watching it in the next one, just a moment of pause and let's catch up on the other side.